Okay, so we're here at the London Aquatic Centre. We have got a special race planned for today over the distance in this 50 metre pool here. It's going to be loads of fun. Yeah, it's man versus boats, and we have Olympic champion Joe Clark versus Team Charles Barclay. Okay, so we decided to have a head-to-head -head battle with Joe Clark, the Olympic gold medalist in the canoe slalom. I'm Joe Clark, Olympic champion in canoe slalom, specifically the men's K1 discipline. I'm here today at the London Aquatic Centre to uh, do some sprints in the pool. Uh, unfortunately with coronavirus being around we normally go abroad to warmer climates but we're stuck here today in the swimming pool. Nice warm water to, uh, to make the most out of a bad situation. Obviously he's going to be in a kayak that moves a lot faster than us two as swimmers. Uh, 100 metres usually takes you around 40 seconds so I'm feeling pretty confident but I'm pretty tired today so let's see what happens. Yeah, I think the world record for the 100 metres is a low 40 seconds, so I don't think we've got any chance of that. But we have introduced a few curveballs for the Joe to, uh, to weave around, I think. Yeah, so whilst me and Reese have got to swim straight up and back down the pool, Joe is going to have to do some twisting and turning, maybe slightly over 100 metres. His course will be 100 metres, but he's got to paddle out to it and back. So we're going to try and even it out. I think it's going to be a pretty close race. They've kept us quiet from me until now. Quite interesting, isn't it? <laughs> So we wanted to try and make it slightly more of an even playing field. So we set up a course in the pool where Joe would have to canoe 100 metres, but on a course where he actually has to go out and back and turn around the poles. And he has to canoe up to the course and back. So he was going slightly more than 100 metres, whilst Reese and myself were going to be doing 50 metres each as a relay to cover that 100 metre distance. So it was still going to be a tough ask, but we felt like this could be quite an evenly matched competition and a fun way to test ourselves against a Olympic gold medalist. Yeah, the idea came from training at the Olympic pool. Uh, just so happens that one day the GB canoeing squad was in and me and Lucy were swimming and all of a sudden this boat came whizzing past us and I just was swimming along thinking to myself, I wonder if we could beat them in a relay and then I thought, nah, probably no chance. Did I think this was going to be an easy task? Definitely not. Having watched Joe warm up, the way that he was able to actually slalom around the poles was way faster than I'd anticipated. So I knew it was still going to be a tough ask. Obviously he hasn't had access to water for a long amount of time, so he's kind of a little bit out of practice, but from our kind of untrained eye, you never would have known because he looks super fast, really strong. Okay, so we decided to wear the Roka swim skin for this challenge. Um, we actually practiced with all sorts uh, from race jammers, wetsuit, sleeveless wetsuit, and we actually decided the swim skin was probably quickest. Um, the wetsuit was definitely fastest once we got up to speed. But because we was doing a dive and a relay takeover, we found that diving in with the wetsuit meant that we lost our underwater dolphin kick and it was a little bit too buoyant. So we just were sort of diving in and going straight to the surface. So the swim skin was the optimal between all three that we tested and we decided to go with that. So we decided that the best kind of strategy for us was that 
I was going to go first because I was slightly slower and then Reese could make up the time on the relay takeover and his 50 meters. So I'd been practicing obviously to make sure that I had a good dive track start to begin with and then obviously back in our day as swimmers we did plenty of relays so we kind of know how the relay takeover works but it's all about the swimmer coming in having a really clear finish so you're not going to end up doing a short stroke at the end so making sure they can see your hand coming in and then obviously Reese is just getting that fly arm ready to go so that he goes as soon as I touch and no time is wasted at all. So when I was actually waiting behind the block, I almost did feel a little bit nervous and I think Joe said he felt the same as well. So it was like bringing back those memories of being a swimmer, standing behind the block and kind of just getting yourself pumped up to race. I felt like I was going super quick and then it was just like this bolt of lightning it was already in front of me when I got to the halfway point on the 50 meter Joe was already turning to come back so I in my head thought oh my god we've already lost this but I was like right just head down spin the arms and just drive it into the wall knowing that I've got my faster second half is coming from Reese in this 100 meters by the time that Lucy touched the wall Joe had just turned the second pole which really made me think we've completely messed this up and my aim was to not breathe but actually Actually, I saw Joe coming behind me. I decided to look to the left just to see how close he was, which meant that I took that breath as I looked. Never seen anything come so quick uh, behind. And it, I think it gave me an adrenaline buzz on the last 10 meters because it was so, so close. So I've always been a distance swimmer. I used to do a bit of sprinting, but not much, but I've never dived in a race and already been like three body lengths behind. So that was a bit of a shock to the three system. Boat, boat lengths. Three boat lengths behind. So I knew that it was going to be a tough ask from the gun. Luckily I had Speedster Reese going next. So I just had to put my head down, sprint. Don't know what time I did, but it felt like I went pretty quick. So good start, I think. Yeah, um, so basically I knew that once Joe had got to the second pole on the, the second time he got there, he was over halfway and he was already over halfway before we was. So we had a work cut out, but he had a lot more weaving to do at the end of his race than we did. Um, I've never been so scared in my life seeing a boat come steaming behind. I literally saw him out the corner of my eye, I had about five meters left to go and it was, I don't know, we, we, I think he probably would have won, but he had to decelerate his boat, otherwise he would have crashed into the wall. So it was a super tight race. Um, so I think we won, <laughs> just. Yeah, well, I, I mean, I echo these guys' thoughts. Uh, to be honest, I was feeling quietly optimistic when I got to the halfway stage, thinking this is in the bag here. Uh, but then Reese jumped in and uh, yeah, picked me at the end. So, <laughs> uh, but definitely looking forward to uh, hopefully having a rematch, because, uh, my fitness is only going to get better guys, so watch out. <laughs> So obviously Joe is pretty much the top of his field in what he does, he's the Olympic gold medalist. We have got a background where we both used to do sprint for 50 metres, Reese more so than me, but I still was able to make the national final for the 50 metre sprint and my best time was just under that 26 second mark for 50 metres. So obviously we've got a high level of sprint, I think your best time for 50 metres was 
uh, 23, 22 from a relay. So in the 22, 23 second range. So we're quick, but we're nowhere near as quick as your Olympic gold medalists in the 50 meters. They'd probably be between five and seven seconds quicker than us if they were to do the same thing that we did. So it would be really interesting to see how they fared against Joe, obviously when he's super fit in prime, when he's going into the Olympics and the same for them. So we're triathletes. We're pretty good at sprinting, but we're definitely not the top of our field. And I know that Joe has probably still got tons of progress he can make. So if we have a rematch, I imagine we're not going to get much quicker. Joe probably is, but yeah, it's pretty cool just to have some stats there and compare the two of us. Um, as I say, yeah, we couldn't have we couldn't have made it any more close. Like it wasn't intentional for it to be that close. We thought that he would probably absolutely wipe the floor with us, but. It was super close, I think it was literally within less than a second, so it turned out to be a really good race. And I think he said he wants to do it again once he gets a little bit fitter, so there might be another, another attempt coming. Rematch coming up. Yeah, so a little bit of a different video, but we had the opportunity to race Joe when the uh, pool was a little bit quieter for everyone, so really happy that we took that chance to do that. If you enjoy this video, then please give it a thumbs up, like and subscribe to our channel. And don't forget, if you want to see a rematch, then comment below and we'll try and make it happen.